Over the course of a lifetime, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Of all breast cancer diagnoses this year, 1% of these cases will be in men. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. TGMC is celebrating this October with several initiatives to raise awareness of this silent killer in the community. And welcome back. We're live with Dr. Robert Gamble, good friend of mine. Hadn't seen him in a while, so we're great to have him on board and certainly heard the introduction. And it's a big topic tonight, something that affects us certainly in this area. So, Doc, welcome back. We appreciate Thank you being here. Thank you for having me. All right, now, let's talk about uh, breast cancer and the difference between other cancers. Can you differentiate it for us a little bit? Well, breast cancer is one of the types that is what they call hormonally uh, uh, mediated, meaning that in uh, a fair percentage of people who have it, the breast cancer is sensitive to the hormones that are produced by men and women, estrogen and progesterone. Uh, prostate cancer is another one that is hormonally driven and the basis of this hormonal manipulation, uh, hormonal drive is uh, uh, incorporated into the various treatments that we use to treat breast cancer. Okay. Now who is affected by breast cancer? The, obviously the majority are women, uh, mainly because of their uh, high production of estrogen and progesterone. Men can also be affected, but obviously most commonly in women, and it's also an age-related issue. Uh, I don't want to say that too bluntly because I'm in that age group now, uh, but <laughs> uh, th most women with breast cancer are over the age of 50, and the average age is probably 65 to 67. Okay. Right? Now, the increased risk factors that go along with breast cancer, can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. The, um, there, are, there are several, as before, age and gender, all right, women more than men age-related. Most cancers are more common as you become older, more mature, okay? And also you've got a uh, family history that can be important, uh, especially if there's a family member who has breast cancer, colon cancer, uh, some of the female cancers, gynecologic, ovarian, uh, fallopian tube, uterine cancer. Okay, cigarette smoking is, has not made it to that high risk, although cigarette smoking causes a lot of other issues. Uh, you've got a genetic influence. This is a very small percentage of people. There are certain genes that, if present, can produce a, up to 80% risk of breast cancer in women during their lifetime. These are referred to as the BRCA, B-R-C-A genes, okay? Normally these exist in all of us and they serve to prevent breast cancer from happening. When they become mutated, altered, then that increases the risk of breast cancer in the affected individual. And again, this is a relatively rare group. There are certain hereditary uh, populations uh, that have it, uh, Ashkenazi Jewish people among them. Uh, it is also seen in the general population, but again, a very small percentage. Uh, another risk is the menstrual cycle. Women who develop, uh, uh, begin their bleeding periods at a very young age, and those who have uh, the end of their menstrual cycles, menarche, correction, uh, menopause, at a late age. All of these can be potential risk factors. All right. Now, the potential symptoms for those watching, what would they be for breast cancer? Usually it's a lump that the woman would find or the physician would find in a breast, uh, usually the upper outer portion of the breast, they call the upper outer quadrant. Uh, it is usually but uh, uh, asymptomatic usually does not cause any symptoms. Rarely there will be some pain or discomfort, but most commonly it's unusual. I will say that with mammographic screening, most of the breast cancers that we're finding now are smaller and not necessarily palpable, meaning you can't actually feel them unless you know exactly where they are. And that's the benefit of uh, mammographic uh, utilization because we're finding when we find the breast cancer, it's more commonly nowadays in a earlier stage. Okay. Now the tests that are recommended in order to catch this cancer, 
in its early stage? What would that be? Once again, it's mammogram. We do recommend, or, or it is uh, recommended that from the ages of 20 to 39, uh, that women get a, 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 a breast exam by their physician usually every three to four years. By the time they get to age 40, it's recommended to have a physical exam by a physician every year, and if possible, a mammogram. Mm, some, some societies recommend one mammogram every three to four years, other, between the ages of 40 and 50. Others say get a mammogram once a year, but definitely over the age of 50, once again, a yearly uh, physical exam by a physician and a yearly mammogram. All right, what we're going to do, we'll take a break and hear from Terrebonne General Medical Center. We'll come back more with Dr. Robert Gamble. Don't go away. Together, a crew of top specialists, and you can do amazing things. Cardiac care at TGMC. It all begins here. Think of six men you know. One of them will get prostate cancer. Early detection can save a life. Make an appointment with the experts. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. Think of six men you know. One of them will get prostate cancer. Early detection can save a life. Make an appointment with the experts. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. All right, welcome back. Our guest tonight. To your health with Terrebonne General Medical Center is Dr. Robert Gamble. We're talking about breast cancer and the survival rate uh, for those diagnosed with breast cancer. Can you touch on that a little bit? Sure. Um, as mentioned previously, we're finding more early stage breast cancer due to the more widespread use of mammography. Uh, for stage one and two disease, which these stages have certain characteristics to define them, usually you've got three quarters to 90 percent of women are alive at the end of five years. More advanced disease, such as stage three, you've got roughly half to two thirds at the end of five years, and this is due to the more advanced uh, characteristics of, of the breast cancer at stage three. I, I see you brought a model, and, and I want you to explain the model to us if you can, please, Doc. This basically is, is a cutaway of a breast, a, a typical human breast, all right? And all it shows is the basic anatomy beneath the skin. You have the, the nipple, the areolar or complex, the duct system that empties to the nipple. And these are just various pathologic uh, findings. You have a cyst, you've got tumor over here on this side, you've got a tumor over here. Um, this may not be what it looks like when the breast surgeon cuts into it, but this is just an example for uh, you know, uh, uh, purposes for public education. Right? Okay. You've got actually skin, you have soft tissue, and then you have fat here, and then muscle underneath. Okay, very good. Let's segue into the treatment that Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC offers. Can you go into that? Well, we have, we have cutting edge um, therapy with respect to radiation treatment. We have up-to-date chemotherapy regimens. We have uh, access to experimental programs, much like you would find in other tertiary care centers. All right, surgical expertise is by far quite excellent, very good. So we have um, the whole gamut of uh, therapy to treat breast cancer available in the backyard. All right, let's talk about some of the support that Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center, they offer their breast uh, cancer patients, and I think we're gonna have uh, this on screen, and we could run through those uh, sure. Doc, if you don't mind. Right. Well, there's several. There's the Look Good, Feel Better uh, that offers makeovers for cancer patients. All right. Uh, there's Camp Bluebird, which is an adult cancer camp every year that we held, hold at Lumen Christi. And it's in October. TGMC offers what's referred to as a wig room, supplies for wigs, scarves, turbans, and hats to all of our cancer patients. Also, Bosom Buddies, 
which is a support group for breast cancer survivors. And if I may make a plug, one of our partners, Dr. Doria, has a support group a, um, called Nosotros, which is once monthly. It addresses the spiritual needs of our cancer patients, which is extremely important. How about uh, screenings? Does Terrebonne General Medical Center offer screening? Yes, there's a, there's a system in place referred to as the early bird, and it's being offered, uh, I believe, October 22nd at Canada's on the east side. It is fully funded, I must say, by Dr. Sarah Haydell, fully funded by her, and this offers free screening to women of um, any age who wish to go in for evaluation. Right, what are some of the things that Terrebonne General Medical Center also does that would support uh, breast Cancer Awareness Month. Right, primarily it's, it's well, there are several things, but uh, Terrebonne General um, is committed to offering all of these services to its employees. Uh, they want to make sure that through education, all of their employees, men and women, understand the risks of breast cancer, what can be done to detect it, and also let them know that we have the therapy to treat it. Real quick, you excited about that big grand opening? Oh yes, extremely. I'm, uh, we're, I'm, we're waiting. We're yeah. just we're, we're 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 salivating. I hear it is a super nice facility. So definitely. Thank you so much, Doc. And for more information, we'll put this on the screen. Also, for the viewers, you can call 873-4616. My good buddy, Doctor Gamble. Thanks so much for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. it. All right, Thank we'll you very take much. a break. When we come back. Nickel State University has a bunch of information for you and a bunch of guests. We'll be right back. Don't go away.